Okay, TRS-80 Information Series Video 1, the Model 1. Okay, this is a Model 1 TRS-80. Um, it's uh, the original one I bought um, back in the day and it still runs. I'm an enthusiast of these machines and I like them a lot. Um, so for the, those of you who are watching this and just want to see one boot up, I'll quickly show you now how they how to start one of these old beasts up. Um, and then we'll go on to uh, a second part of this video where I'll go through the specific components of the machine and I'll show you how uh, how it's set up. Okay, so these machines are quite easy to set up uh, to get started um, and the procedure is quite simple. You turn on the disk drive first and then the monitor and then this is where it gets important the expansion interface has to be turned on and then finally the keyboard so we put the expansion interface on by pressing that button and then we turn the computer on with its power switch which is hidden behind here and we get a welcoming screen full of garbage which is actually a good sign on these computers it means that the keyboard unit sees the extra memory and the disk controller which is housed in the interface so then we just put a boot disk in now, those of you who are purists would notice this is a Coco drive but I uh, actually prefer them they take up less space and are more reliable we put the disk in and then on all these machines you press the reset button which starts your disk operating system and there we have it the computers up and running uh, it's asking for a date this copy of the operating system has been patched so if I put in today's date which is um, the uh, January uh, February um, the 8th of 2011 now it'll ask for the time but no one ever puts the time in there we go and we're at a DOS command and ready to use that computer anyway so that's how you start up one of those computers so how do we put one together just say you've uh, recently been given one or you've bought one off eBay or inherited one you're probably going to have a pile of stuff that looks like this and then you're probably wondering what do I do with it all and how do I put it together it's really quite simple to put together if you know how to do it so the monitor is pretty self-explanatory that's the big thing there that's an Australian monitor by the way uh, so if you're watching this from the United States it why, might be why it looks a little bit funny um, we'll take the anti-glare screen off that a bit later and you can have a look at it how they look keyboard self-explanatory the expansion box is there in front and another one of those uh, cocoa disk drives that I prefer now to set it up the first thing we do is set up uh, by putting the expansion interface on the table that always goes down first because um, uh, there's so many things that need to be plugged into it so I'm just going to set my camera up on a tripod here and uh, we will uh, have a look at the expansion interface Okay, now, an expansion interface has extra memory, the disk controller, it also holds the power supplies, and it also holds the, um, the uh, serial port if you've got one installed, and um, it acts as a base for the monitor. Um, right, so, this one's a little bit modified, I'll show you in which way I've modified it. Normally we put two Tandy power supplies inside. Um, but uh, this one I just preferred to put um, up, uh, remove them and mount them inside because it's just neater and then it, you can power it from one power cord instead of two of them I'll just open it up
So that's where I've put the two power supplies, sit in neatly. And uh, on your one, if you've got one of these expansion interfaces without them, I always plug in there where that connector is. So it's pretty easy to work out. Uh, put that back on. Uh, in this compartment here is where the serial port lives. Um, so it just comes apart. Uh, when we get this thing off, you'll see that there's nothing in here, but if there was a circuit board in there, um, if there were a circuit board in there, that would be the serial port. So uh, the dead giveaway as well. The serial port, by the way, comes out here at the front. So if the panel, if the computer has a, uh, a cover here, like this one does, it's fair to say that probably the previous owner never put a serial port in, but it's always worthwhile checking. Get this one back together. We'll put the rest of the screws later. Now, a quick look inside the expansion interface. I've already taken the screws off before. If yours has a board sitting there, a daughter board, like that, that's a double density kit. And these row of things I'm looking at here are where the extra RAM goes. Now on this particular Model 1, the um, extra RAM is in the keyboard already, so it doesn't need to have it installed inside this one. So now we will set up the computer proper. You need a four outlet power board, and we plug him in. Uh, you would plug both the uh, the keyboard and the um, and the uh, expansion interface on a standard one. My one just has the cable here for the power to the to the keyboard unit um, hanging out of it. So I'll set it like that. Put this back on the tripod. Okay, now, the keyboard unit, there it is, that just sits on the table in front of the uh, expansion interface. Plug the power in here. Incidentally, there's three power sockets, there's three sockets here, one for power, one for the monitor, one for the cassette. Be careful which ones you plug it into, you don't want it the wrong way around, it damages the computer. So we plug that in like so. Now they're wired together. The next thing you want is the disk drive. It sits next to the computer and plugs into the power. Just like this. The cable connects to the back of the expansion interface um, and it exits going downwards. So it goes in like that. The next thing for a basic system is the monitor and it just sits up there like that and gets plugged in and connected to the monitor connector on the back of the TRS-80. We turn it on, the disk drive and the monitor can go on, then we can plug, turn on the expansion interface and then the computer. These uh, cables between the two tend to be a little bit iffy. Um, so I'll try again. There's the garbage screen we want. Oh, incidentally, this has got an anti glare screen because it's an Australian screen. We have a lot of problem with sun glare here. So we put these on them. And then all we need is a DOS disk. In it goes. Reset button. We would hope. And of course, it doesn't want to start. 
Um, we'll come back in the second video shortly and I'll show it booting up.